back to Contemporary Black Voices, and we're right in the middle of uh, Mr. Dawkins having a question. So we'll go go to it, Chris. I, I really wanted to talk to Mario. Uh, he and I had worked with some younger folks, and I think Mario definitely told them that defund was not a very good word to right. use. That's right. But what I think happened around the country is that our, we allowed our younger folks to really take on this this fight. And when we allowed them to take on the fight, they determined that they wanted to use the word defund the police. So that's yeah, what I wanted well, to add. And it was always just a specific section of the young people. It wasn't every young person. No. Because I, I often, I saw them arguing about that as well. Um, it was a certain, I don't know, you could characterize it as political, from a political point of view. In my opinion, people who are ultra leftists came up with the defund the, the police. Would, would, would the you, people who were leftists or moderates said that's not cool. Right. And then you got extremists who came up with, in my opinion, would came you, up with that. Would you please define what defund means in a political aspect and then what defund has meant that people understand it to be? Because well, I think those are two different the, things. The dictionary definition of defund is to get rid of, take right. away the money of. Right. Right. Politically, right, it may not mean that. Right. It may mean you're taking away certain amounts of money. Right. Reprogram. reprogram that's right. what they tried to mean. Right. Reprogramming mm -hmm. that money in another direction. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, and so it just depends on whose definition, but it's such a vague term. It, it, wow, that, you talk about a running back seeing a hole in the line, they run straight through that line. Right. Mm -hmm. Because that was a bad choice of terms. Yes. It, they should have probably used refund the police. That might have been a better term. Mm -hmm. yeah, it would have been definitely better than, than defund. <laughs> yeah, refund. Yeah, re refund the police with yeah. good officers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> defund the bad police. <laughs> but no, I guess but all they had to do was they had defund the bad cop. Right. <laughs> So, I, I mean, my, my, my question is, my concern, more than anything, um, when you look at the, the relationship between police and, 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 uh, and the way they treat black folks, I mean, it, police come from society, and so their attitude towards black folks is a reflection of society. And so my question, uh, my question of concern is, how do you change the way they view black folks and thus change the way they interact with black folks? And so that that's more of a, of a of a broader issue between society and changing society the broader society's perception of of, of black folks and how do you do that because I think a lot of that will probably uh, it stems from the economic conditions of those communities. Yeah, well, and and, and I go back to the problem of someone who's a white supremacist. Mm -hmm. You're not going to change them this side of eternity. Mm -hmm. but, but and I'm not necessarily in agreement with more training because more training has just meant, didn't change the figure of 229, mm -hmm. unless the training has something to do with, we're going to try and get rid of officers who have a bias mm -hmm. before they became, we're never gonna let them right. become officers. And mm -hmm. we're gonna vet them. Have you ever mm -hmm. used the word, the N word? This is what a, a police psychologist ought to be asking mm -hmm. those officers. I don't, they're not doing that. Have you used the N-word? Do you have any tattoos on you that reflect Nazi mm -hmm. sympathize, sympathies? Mm -hmm. uh, take off your shirt, let me see. Mm -hmm. They're not doing that. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, I, and if they would only do that, I think it would cut down some. It would cut mm -hmm. down some. At what point would they do that? Before they get hired? Yeah, before they get hired. Okay. Mm -hmm. when, when they go through the vetting process, right. the hiring process, mm -hmm. they're, they're not doing that. Do you mm -hmm. have anybody in your family that uh, told racist jokes? Uh, these are legitimate questions you can yeah. ask a police officer. Mm -hmm. um, they're not going to ask carpenters yeah. that. Maybe there's no need because mm -hmm. they're not killing people with hammers and saws. <laughs> but uh, yeah. but police officers ought to be asked questions like that. Yeah. If, do you hate women? You know, right. have you ever slapped your wife? Mm -hmm. you, have you ever been had abuse charges filed against you for any kind of hatred? Do you, do you, have you ever experienced hatred from friends or neighbors or relatives? I mean, mm -hmm. these are all kinds of questions that are legit. Mm -hmm. from a sociological point of view right. and ought to be asked. They're not doing that. So, and I think you could, you could probably... I think you weed out a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, you could weed out some of these bad cops <laughs> before they ever get started. Before they get started. Okay. Sure. You know, um, police officers, they're, to, to me, they're going to be here to stay. So, aside from the, the vetting process that you described, what needs to be done, if any, to where there is a website where bad officers 
name, rank, serial number, blood type, picture is put up to where they're not hired in other communities. They leave one community bad, go into another community bad. So I know that there's a, te there's a website, I'm not gonna give the name of the website about bad teachers. Yeah. So what about bad police officers? Yeah, well, and anything short of state or change in state law is not gonna work because state law allows them to move from one jurisdiction to another mm -hmm. and the record doesn't have to follow them. Wow. And so that, that has to do, the Le Texas legislature would have to pass a law that says, if you've been fired because you beat somebody up illegally, then that record needs to go mm -hmm. to the next place you are. I mean, that happens to all of us, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you don't have to, they, they ain't gonna wanna hire somebody that, that committed a crime. So look, I mean, this is true of San Antonio. That the, the dog poop cop, the one I referred to about feeding a homeless man a feces sandwich, he got hired by Leanne Valley Police because the law said that that incident did not have to follow him, his mm. record. So when wow. they looked at his record, that incident is not there. Not, on there. not there. But what about if a average citizen did that website? And because you're not talking about the police union or anything else, and you wouldn't get a defamation lawsuit because if they had something that was brought up against them and or convicted of that okay, public and information public information yeah. and the person put that on the website it was a public website then i don't think i think that circumvents well, that your good point chris and, and mm -hmm. good point sharon the public or someone in the public some advocate ought to create a website right all of the known bad police officers that been made public because you can't stop that. Right. It's public. It was in the news. Mm -hmm. You could put that guy's picture, and some people are already doing that, but it's not a centralized website. Mm -hmm. It needs to be a centralized website. These are your bad cops in the city of San Antonio who have now moved over to some suburb, Balcones High, Chavano Park, but these are the bad guys, and then have that website so it's, people can see it across the state. Um, so that's a great point mm -hmm. so because that's the only way it can be done. My, my other question is, um, in, in your interactions and interrelationship with law enforcement, why are they not being as vocal as they can be about the proliferation of assault weapons? Uh, is it like a silent compact with the NRA? With yeah, those? well, yeah, that's a great question mm -hmm. because the answer to the question is yes and no. Mm -hmm. It kind of depends on which officer you speak to. Mm -hmm. Because when I talk to police officers who they hate open carry, mm -hmm. and they'll tell you in a heartbeat, yeah, They'll tell you the heartbeat there's a shootout between two people. I don't know who the good guy is, the bad guy is. Mm -hmm. I'm probably going to start shooting at both of them <laughs> because I don't know who they are. But you get another cop who's connected to Trump and the NRA, mm -hmm. they're going to take the opposite position. So then be the question then becomes political. Uh, some cops are going to support not open carry. They're going to support let's get rid of these guns on the street. Other cops are going to say that's a violation of the Second Amendment. So it depends, really depends on which cop you're referring to. I, I had a police officer tell me one time, I can carry a gun openly any day I want. I, am I going to do that? I go, hope not. He said, no, I'm not going to do that. That's flaunting, number one. That, that's ego tripping. That, that's, that doesn't make any sense for me to do that. I, maybe I'm concealed. You don't need to know I have a gun. But why, why would I want you to know I have a gun? Mm -hmm. A bad guy, I ain't going to stop him anyway. Um, or he'll get a chance, he'll just blow you off and go kill somebody else. I, and, uh, I mean, like, as far as the, the assault, like the AR-15s, how do they feel about the assault weapons, so, the weapons of war? Some of them are opposed to it because they mm -hmm. know a weapon like that could be used to kill them. Right. So some, and other cops are saying, well, it's, it, and this is, they're mistaken, the ones who think this way, but there's, well, only good guys have AR-15s. <laughs> that, that, yeah, I've heard a cop actually say that. Really? Wow. Yeah. And so the, the, and that's an NRA guy. Wow. An NRA cop versus a non-NRA cop. Wow. And so I think that's what we're dealing with. There's two sides of, of this story. Well, so Mario, the Second Amendment, tell me what your thought is. Second Amendment? Yeah. Well, yeah, I have guns. I believe people have the right to have a gun. Okay. But I don't need a, a 50 caliber machine gun to go out and kill deer and rabbits with. <laughs> um, you know, I don't need an AR-15 to, to go hunting. You know, I don't, I don't go hunting. I used to. I don't anymore. 
it's not very brave to set up in a tree with camouflage and shoot a deer. I know. They can't shoot back at you. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that, that to me got nothing to do with manhood. It's just something people want to do. Or you might make the argument it's ridiculous to some degree. Thank you. So, so but the, mm -hmm. the, the, the ability to have a weapon, I think, is okay. Just depends on what kind. Cannons, automatic weapons, no. <laughs> you, you shouldn't have that kind of okay, stuff. <laughs> well, let's turn this back into us. What is our responsibility as black people, as the black community? What is our responsibility? Know the law is the main thing. Know the, the, the amendments to the Constitution that, that deal with police stops. If you don't know those, be mm -hmm. trained in them. Get the training you need uh, to know that you don't have to answer questions on a police stop. You can you can refuse a search on a police stop, especially if there's no probable cause or nothing in eyesight, direct eyesight of the police officer. But what should we start? So we stop teaching our kids that they are our enemy. I used to tell my students, black students, man, if the speed limit is 35, go 34. You know, why mm -hmm. why challenge? Because once they pull you over, they own you. And, and I don't know why we can't get that message across. There's so many times where you, you see some of these, uh, what happens, and a lot of the blacks are trying to challenge. They're the worst people in the world to challenge the police. Mm -hmm. Well, um, if it's a bad cop, it's one story. If it's a good cop, that's another story. Um, because good cops sometimes are just going to give you a ticket, and they're not going to try to own you. They're going to give you a ticket and say, try to slow down keep on going. A bad cop, yeah, he's going to try to own you. And so you're right about, you need to be careful about challenging things ridiculously. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, there's a point where it's ridiculous. Um, it, 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 you know, the law says you're not supposed to be speeding. Well, they have the right to stop you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so you, you have a good point about, you, know, there's a, you have to obey the law. You, you have to obey the law, but, you, but also the police officer has to obey the law. Right. So it, it's a two way street. Did you have something, Chris? No. Oh. I, do, I have a quick oh, question. What are the minimal requirements to be a police officer? Well, it used to be just a high school education, but San Antonio, in some cities, it still is just a high school education, and that's pretty poor. Uh, and really, it is. I mean, you don't have the benefit of having some college or university experience. It could be you went to an all-white school. That's a problem uh, in the high yeah. school. Especially these co officers coming from Bandera and Helotus, right. where those schools are 80, 90 percent white. Mm -hmm. that They are at a total disadvantage. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. So um, it used to be that. I think over the course of years, I think San Antonio uh, opted for a police officer ought to have at least two years of college. Right. So they go, some of them go to San Antonio College yes. and so forth. And I think Chief Mac, the chief here in San Antonio, uh, wanted that to be the rule. Mm -hmm. So they tried to raise up the level just a little bit. And two years of college is better than none, but even then, that ain't much either. It depends on which college. Yeah, it depends on the college. <laughs> and, you know, it, it, it's an apartheid college. And, <laughs> it, 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 what it, kind of college? It, yeah, it's an, an apart apartheid college, <laughs> in, you know, in Tiger Shoe, Texas. we got about uh, 45 seconds left. So, so, so yeah, right, I'm going to give you the question. that time to whatever you want to tell our viewers. Sure. sure, I'm glad to be here. Okay. Thank you much. Oh, go ahead. You want to say something to our viewers? Oh, well, no. I'm just saying, um, know the law, know your rights, report bad police officers when if they abuse you. Don't wait five minutes. Get on the phone, go downtown, file a complaint with Internal Affairs. We, we support our good cops, but well, we don't support the bad ones. Well, we want to thank you for being here, uh, Professor Salas. And hopefully you'll come back at another time. Be glad to. Okay. So this is Temporary Black Voices. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back with you.